Cyberpunk 2077 latest 2.0 update has brought new life to the game and is one of the best experiences you can find in 2023. In this video, I'm going to break down some of the changes 2.0 brings, provide some personal tips, and give you some info on how to start the Phantom Liberty storyline. Starting out, if you haven't played the main story in a long time, then I personally suggest playing the main story again. CD Projekt Red has suggested that replaying the story is one of the best decisions you can make with the new updates in 2.0. I've been playing it myself and the game has added some scenes or features that were not originally there when the game released in 2020. You can continue with the previous save and go into the expansion if you would like regardless, but this would probably be my biggest tip starting out. So if you did pick up the Phantom Liberty expansion, how exactly do you start it? Well, the Phantom Liberty expansion offers a self-contained story that occurs during the events of the base game. You don't need a previously saved game to play it, and when starting a new game, you have two options. You can begin with the very start of the base game and gradually progress to Phantom Liberty by following the main story and completing the transmission quest. Alternatively, you can choose to skip ahead and play Phantom Liberty directly. This option fast tracks you to the point where V begins the expansion storyline. Both choices provide access to all the content and you can jump right into the new stuff. In the 2.0 update, Cyberware has undergone changes. Each piece of Cyberware now has a capacity cost and you have a cap on how much you can equip. This means that you must make strategic decisions about which Cyberware to install based on your playstyle. For example, if you prefer melee combat and might prioritize Cyberware that enhances your melee capabilities, it's essential to manage your your capacity wisely, especially in the earlier and mid game, as you won't be able to equip everything at tier four or five simultaneously. All Ripper Docks now stock all the same items for sale. However, many items are gated by their tier, which means that they won't appear on vendor lists until you reach a certain level range. Cyberware availability is tiered based on the character's level. Tiers start at tier one for levels one to 10 and increment by 10 levels reaching tier five plus plus at level 60. At level 10, Ripper Docs will start offering two Sandy models and two Berserk models. Should check for new cyberware options at levels 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Street cred may also play a role in this, but it's not entirely clear. The Relic Skill Tree is also a new feature in Cyberpunk 2.0. The Relic Skill Tree offers valuable perks and effects enhancing your character's abilities. Some perks in this tree are specific to certain cyberware, so it's crucial to invest in perks that align with your cyberware that you have equipped. Skill points for the Relic Tree are earned through the expansion missions and by collecting them from stations scattered around Dogtown. These perks can significantly impact your gameplay, so choose wisely. The 2.0 update introduces vehicle combat, adding depth to the engagements involving vehicles. There are specific perks and additional skill trees that enhance your vehicle's combat capabilities. Additionally, you can now cycle between weapons equipped on your vehicle and use them during combat. To fully utilize these features, consider investing into relevant perks and experimenting with different vehicle types. I highly recommend finding the Type 66 Hoon because it's a free vehicle you can get pretty early on and you can find it in the warehouses north of Watson. It's also a tribute to Ken Block. You can find my video on how to get that vehicle in the playlist in the description down below. While exploring Night City, you may encounter a dynamic missions in the form of airdrops and courier missions. Airdrops are marked by crash landings and red smoke flare. They offer various challenges such as retake, defeating a few enemies, shootout, battling multiple enemies, and ambush enemies appear after you, you grab the loot. There's also just grab where it's just free loot. Courier missions involve stealing a vehicle and driving it to a specified location, often leading to an exciting vehicle chase and combat. These events are completely spontaneous and can be pretty rewarding sometimes. Skill trees in Cyberpunk 2.0 have undergone changes, but the basic leveling system remains the same. As you level up, you earn attribute points and allocate those points into five categories intelligence technical ability reflex cool and body each category also provide unique passive bonuses for instance intelligence increases ram slots for hacking while body boosts your maximum health these attributes also unlock higher level perks in their respective skill trees as you explore night city you'll accumulate various items sell what you don't need at drop point chaos marked on your map focus on selling weapons especially common drops as they can 
fetch a decent amount of eddies, the in-game currency. Additionally, al alcohol items should be sold since they impose debuffs when consumed. When managing your inventory, prioritize selling weapons and clothing, as they typically offer the best payouts. If you're already good on eddies, then you could dismantle the weapons, as crafting equipment is crucial for upgrading or crafting new items. Enemies no longer drop ammo in Cyberpunk 2.0. To replenish your ammunition, keep an eye out for ammo crates during combat encounters. Use your scanner to locate the white ammo markers on tables and shelves, and alternatively craft ammo in the inventory using crafting components. You can access this option in the crafting tab, and if you're running low on ammo, you can always buy it from weapon vendors, further ensuring you're well equipped for battles. Another notable change in the 2.0 update is how grenades and healing items work. They now have cooldowns instead of being a single-use item. Once you have a healing item or grenade, you can use it repeatedly provided you wait for the cooldown period. This means that acquiring high-tier healing items and grenades early can ensure that you are always have access to them during battles. Crafting or buying a tier 5 items of these types is always a good strategy. Phantom Liberty introduces choices and multiple endings to the game. The expansion is designed to be replayable as your decisions significantly impact the storyline and lead to unique outcomes. One particularly critical choice in the expansion leads to two district story branches, each with its own narrative, missions, locations, and adversaries. Furthermore, these choices can result in an entirely new ending for the entire game. It's a good idea to save your game frequently and consider using auto saves after major choices to explore different story paths and maximize replayability. With the 2.0 update, you're also able to change your character's appearance. Head to a Ripper Dock or find a bathroom mirror in your apartment to tweak your character's look. This is a welcome feature for those who want to refresh their in-game persona. Additionally, Cyberpunk 2077 includes a transmog system, which you can create outfits at clothing stores or apartment closets. These outfits don't affect the bonuses from your gear, allowing you to customize your character's appearance without compromising your playstyle. Cyberpunk 2077 is finally in a state where I recommend everyone should at least try it once. I've been having tons of fun replaying the main story and have been really enjoying the Phantom Liberty expansion so far. If this video helped you out, be a chum and leave a like on it. Subscribe for more like this, join the stream sometime, and thanks for watching.